Good day students, welcome to math.serve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over problem number five, uh, which is part one of our limits component of calculus ABBC. Problem five corresponds to problem number three um, in the 1969 AP Calculus Multiple Choice Release Test Items. So let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. It says, if you have this piecewise defined function here. Um, you have this if and only if f is continuous at x equals 2, then x equals. So let's um, go ahead and review what the definition of continuity at a point is first, and then we'll apply it to this problem, okay? So f is continuous. At, let, at let's say some point C, at C, um, if <clears throat> if the left hand limit at C is equal to the value of the function at C and is equal to the right hand limit at C. Okay, this is just a verbal abbreviation of what it means for a uh, function to be um, continuous at a point. So let's write this symbolically. This is can be written as the limit as x approaches c from the left of the function is equal to the value of the function at c, and that should be equal to the limit as x approaches c from the right of the function. These three have to be equal to each other in order for us to conclude that the function is continuous at C. Okay, let me uh, give you a graphical representation of um, this situation here. So let's look at what is happening around C. So let's call this point right here C. <coughs> so wait, when you're coming <coughs> towards C from the right, um, that's, I mean, from the left in this direction right here, this is approaching C from the left. And then from this direction right here, this is approaching C from the right. And then this right here is the value of C. Okay. X equals C. All right. So if you're going from the left, um, this situation right here, this is the left hand limit. Okay. Which is written as a limit as X approaches C from the um, left okay and then at the point when you write on the point this is the value <clears throat> this is the value and it's f of c okay and then from the right uh, this is the right hand limit the limit as x approaches c from the right of the function all right so in order for a function to be continuous these three have to be the same okay this function has to be, this limit has to be approaching this point, and this limit also has to be approaching that point, and the point has to be defined. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply um, this definition or this condition of continuity to this problem. Now, this is an interesting piecewise defined function. Um, so let's go ahead and set it up. <clears throat> so whenever you're working on um, piecewise defined functions and limits and continuity is always um, beneficial to draw a graph of the situation, okay? Uh, not the actual graph, but just intervals indicating what functions are active on the different parts of the domain of x, okay? So let's go ahead and sketch our, our line. So this is the number line. Uh, we're looking at x equals 2. We're establishing continuity at x equals 2, so that will be our c. So let's make that 2 instead of C. Okay, so in this problem, if X is not 2, everything else but 2, how do we draw that on a number line? We just have a line where we have an open circle at 2, okay? So this is everything except 2. For everything except 2, we have the function on the, on the top active, okay? So to the right or to the left of 2, 
we have this function active. So over here we have um, over here we have the square root of two x plus five minus the square root of x plus seven over x minus two. Active on this interval here and also on that interval over there. And then at the point x equals two, we have uh, f of two equals k. All right. So remember that um, this side right here involves approaching two from the left, and then this side right here approach involves approaching two from the right. Now, since um, we have the situation right here, this basically tells us that the left and the right hand limit involve the same function. Okay, they are going to be the same because we're going to be using the same function. So um, the left hand limit um, at x equals 2 is going to be equal to the right hand limit at x equals 2. What, what is it? What is it going to be? So the limit as x approaches 2 from the left and right of the function how do you write um, a combined limit? If you're approaching a value from both sides, how do you write it? You can write it as limit as x approaches 2. If there are no signs, then it's a double-sided limit, okay? So what function are we using? The function that we're using when we're anywhere apart from 2 is this radical function here. So square root of 2x plus 5 minus the square root of x plus 5 divided by um, x minus 2. Now, we have to find out what this limit is, set it equal to k, and that will be our solution, okay? All right, so how do we find the limit of this nature? If we evaluate it by direct substitution, we're going to run, run into some complications here. We will have a 0 in the denominator. Now, does that mean that the limit does not exist? The answer is no. Since we have zero in the denominator, we have a discontinuity of some sort. Okay, we don't know what exactly what it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can um, simplify this in such a way that this discontinuity gets removed or canceled out. So um, how do we do this? We'll simply rationalize the numerator. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll multiply the top and bottom by 2x, the conjugate, plus 5. You just invert the sign between plus the square root of x plus 5. And then the denominator, square root of 2x plus 5 times, I mean, plus the square root of x plus 5. Now, what we're doing is creating difference of squares, okay? Remember, difference of squares a minus b times a plus b is a squared plus b squared. So this limit becomes a limit as x approaches 2. a minus b, a plus b is a squared. Square root of 2x plus 5 squared minus b squared. Square root of x plus 5 squared. Okay? When you follow this out, the middle terms will be identical, so they drop off. So you're left with the square of the first and last terms. In the denominator, when you're working with rationalizing radical expressions of this nature, do not bother simplifying, okay? You're just giving yourself unnecessary work. So just leave it like this. We just hope some cancellation happens, and then we can find the limit without having to um, do any messy sub um, expansions. All right, so let's see what happens here. Um, this becomes the limit as x approaches 2. Square and square roots cancel out, so we have 2x plus 5 minus, um, minus x. Okay, may, I made a slight mistake here. This is supposed to be 7. Real quick correction, so this is 7, and that is 7. And that is also 7. Let's just put that in. So this is 7. So about that, 7, 7, 7. For some reason I changed this 7. So you have a 7 here. 
Okay, so let's go back. <clears throat> so that's x plus 7. I'll run into some complications without fixing that. So x. So we have um, the square root of the square that those two cancel out. So if you distribute the minus to the plus, this becomes minus 7. Okay? So we have to be careful with that. Let's fix this here. This is a 7. That's a 7 also. Okay, so the numerator can be simplified a little bit further. Um, just combine like terms. <coughs> Denominator stays the same. We have um, x minus 2 times the square root of 2x plus 5 plus the square root of x plus 7. Okay, let's see. Uh, upstairs, 2x minus 2. 2x minus x is um, x, and then uh, 5 minus 7 is negative 2, so we have x minus 2 upstairs divided by x minus 2 times the square root of 2x plus 5 plus the square root of x plus 7. Oh, nice. The discontinuity is removable, so we divide that out. And now we can simply plug in 2 without any complications. So this limit now becomes, <coughs> um, what does it become? It becomes, <coughs> what do you get when you substitute 2 for x? So we have 1 over the square root of 2 times 2 plus 5 plus the square root of 2 plus 7, all right? So that becomes 2 times 2 is 4 plus 5 is 9, square root of 9, plus 2 plus 7 is 9, square root of 9. We now simplify this. We have 1 over 3 plus 3, which equals 1 over 6. Okay, so what is this? What did we just find? We just found the left and the right-hand limit. The left and the right-hand limit must be equal to the value of the function, okay? Left-hand limit has to be equal to the right-hand limit, and it has to be equal to the value. All right, these two, we already know what they are. They are both 1, 6. The value of the function is known as f of 2, right? What is f of 2? f of 2 is k. So, uh, 1 over 6 must be equal to k in order for the function to be continuous at x equals 2. So that is our final answer. So our answer is option letter B.